searched everywhere. I looked through hundreds of files, searched through my text messages, I even looked everywhere in my wardrobe, but I just couldn't find where I asked for your opinion. Hey y'all! Welcome to another episode of Dear Kadria Sophia, where I scour the internet in search of situations where I can offer my unsolicited opinion. This episode of Dear Kadria Sophia comes from Dear Abby. Um, I'm going to give you a trigger warning. It says, Dear Kadria Sophia, a RAPE victim has kept it a secret for decades. Okay? Dear Kadria Sophia, 35 years ago, I was RAPED by a stranger. He told me he would KILL me if I ever told anyone. I never told my husband, now ex-husband, mostly because I was afraid if I did, he would never touch me again. So I've lived with the secret. It eventually tore our marriage apart and we divorced. Although we have both moved on and remarried, we have remained in touch. I am 60 now and he is 64. I yearn to tell him the story before one of us leaves this earth. I want him to understand and hopefully forgive me for the events that drove us apart. The need to tell him is so strong, I cry about it. Please advise me on this. Signed, still not over it, in Maryland. If you have watched very few of these Dear Kadria Sophia's, you absolutely know I'm going to say get therapy, ma'am. Get therapy for your own sake. Because a lot of what you wrote may or may not be true in terms of you feeling like this secret that you kept from your husband is what tore up your marriage. Um, and also, you say that you want him to forgive you for the events that drove you apart. The need to tell him is so strong I cry about it. I would advise that you get therapy before you talk to your ex-husband. Uh, you are remarried. So I wonder, I wonder, were you able to talk to your now husband about how you were threatened and violated and had been living in fear of not, not just the initial fear that uh, you were going to be K-I-L-L-E-D, but also the fear that the violation caused you to be undesirable if the person knew that you were violated. So living in that kind of fear, that breeds a whole lot of misinformation within yourself. That's the thing about fear and 
it's uh, it's compadres, it's it's uh, likely buddies. Is that it? Uh, it creates a falsehood that seems so true because of the emotional component attached to it. And you say that uh, you the need to tell him is so strong that you, you cry about it. I'm willing to assert that you're crying about you. And you're crying about the pain and the hurt and the torment that you have gone through. And your soul is seeking relief. And a lot of us are willing to do more for others than we are willing to do for ourselves. And so your inner being, your highest self, your inner guidance knows that the path of least resistance for this release is via your ex-husband. So you may feel like you are crying to tell your ex-husband this truth, but what you're most likely feeling is your desire to not live with the secret. And when we keep things from other people, there's a lot that goes into keeping secrets. And we end up keeping ourselves from the truth. Because the truth is, we always want healing. We always want to feel the wholeness that we always are. So keeping that secret held you in a place of stagnation for your own personal growth and development. So I, I encourage you to get therapy of many kinds. There are survivor groups that you can join, be they in person, online, through an app, through a blog. Um, and there are therapists who are specifically trained to support you in, in, on your journey towards releasing releasing the accumulation of trauma and pain and that's most likely going to be a journey and he may not live to see that And I don't know if that's the important part because my concern is that talking to him about this situation because you have expectations going into it. You expect that this truth is going to relieve you. That seems to be the expectation. I want him to understand and hopefully forgive me. My concern is about your emotional stability if that is not how the conversation goes. His response, 
Because sometimes, what I have learned is most people don't know how to respond to traumatic, hurtful situations that happen to other people. So his response may actually cause more damage. If, if it does not flow in the way that you're seeking for it to flow. So I encourage you before you go to him hoping for his understanding that you understand. Before you go to him hoping for his, his forgiveness, I hope that you forgive yourself. And I yearn to tell him the story before one of us leaves this earth. I hope that it's not you who leaves before your story is told in a way that is healing and that is pleasing and that is empowering to you. That's how I would like you to go to your ex-husband. Not feeling that you have to apologize for what happened to you and your response to it when you didn't know how to respond to it. I would love for you to go to him once you have been supported through your healing journey and go to him feeling empowered so that whether he understands and whether he forgives you it will not break you. That is what I would advise, is that you focus on repairing the damage that you have sustained, regardless to how other people were affected. And I'm not saying that it doesn't matter. I'm saying that the priority must be you first. And then your ex-husband. Okay, still not over it in Maryland. I hope that you find a support system in whatever form that is best for you. I hope you find a therapist uh, that you connect with and can open up to and be honest with and who can give you some tools and techniques because you can go to this person and let them know what your objective is. I would like to discuss this violation that happened to me 35 years ago, uh, because I'm ready to tell my ex-husband what happened to me. And your therapist, who you uh, find to have provided you a safe space, will support you to that end, right? And you'll pick up a whole lot of healing on the way. And I, I always mean it when I say it, but much success to us all.